Welcome to Trinity United Church in Edmonton. Today is Sunday, March 14th. This is the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent. It's also Pi Day. What's Pi Day? Pi Day is a day when we celebrate and we acknowledge and we explore the ways in which we as a congregation as a church, as a community of faith, can be public, intentional, and explicit in our acceptance, welcome, inclusion, joining together, worshiping together, living together, a community of all diversity of sexual orientation, and gender expression. We can celebrate rainbows, we can celebrate our unique lives, and we can share pie. There's never a wrong time for that. Let us pray. Inscribe in our hearts, God, the love you have for us, the life you give to us, the constancy of your presence with us. Inscribe on our hearts, God, the call to follow you, the longing to know you, the compassion to love as you do. Inscribe on our hearts, God, the story of salvation, the part we play in your purposes, the vision of your dream for creation. Inscribe in our hearts, God, all that you hold in yours, or at least of much of, as much of it as we can carry. Spirit, open our hearts. We can sing. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever, those who believe in me, though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. This day we remember a loved one who has died. Hazel Lamont is now gone from among us since last June. We remember happiness when she walked and sang and worked among us. We celebrate the joy of loving and being loved, and a memory is a blessing forever. Let us pray. O oh God, creator of all life, Help us to accept death 
as a part of life, trusting in your goodness for each and every one of us, your great love for us all. We feel again and we recall in our hearts the pain of parting with our beloved Hazel, a charter member of this congregation. We rejoice that we were privileged to experience life with her. And in this community, we entrust Hazel to your, to you in death, as in life you entrusted her to us. Amen. As this community, scattered though we are, but gathered as we can be, we take some time to remember Hazel. We remember especially her life within this church. And we will light a candle, a light, our Christ light. It will be also the light of her life as it reminds us of the light of Christ, which shines in our midst, between us, and within us. Good morning. My name is Audrey Tibbs, and I am honored today to say a few words about my dear friend, Hazel Lamont, who passed away last June at the age of 94. Hazel was a tireless worker at Trinity. She was a charter member, church secretary, and for many, many years was the president of the UCW. She spearheaded the new to you sales twice a year, which was a huge undertaking by all the UCW ladies. And to this day, people still say to me, that was the best sale in the West End. Hazel also organized funeral lunches at the church and the UCW ladies made the sandwiches, dainties and refreshments for all who attended. I always looked forward to going to Canterbury Court one Wednesday a month with Stephen and Joan Wood to conduct a service for the residents. Hazel always attended and looks forward to hearing any Trinity news. She had an amazing memory for people's names and I could always count on her to help me out when I needed help in that regard. When she had to move to the George Zetter, I visited her there, always phoning first to make sure it wasn't her hair appointment day. It was always such a joy for me to have a visit with her in person or on our many, many phone calls. Thankfully, she was able to attend Trinity's anniversary dinner last February. It was a very emotional evening for her and sadly due to COVID, it was the last time I saw her. She was truly one of a kind. A reading from the Old Testament, Book of Numbers, chapter 2, verses 4 to 9. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea, to go round the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. 
Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is part of our sacred story. Thanks be to God.
So today I am coming to you from the large room in the basement of the church. Uh, technically we call it room five to nine, a series of rooms. Once they were separated for Sunday school classes, most of the time now we use them, use it for as one large room. The last time we were together, a year ago, we gathered after worship here to celebrate Pi Day, which we celebrate again today, except now we have to do it online in a virtual setting. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent, and if you've been following along, you know that we've been taking time in this season of Lent to look at God's covenant with the people. God's covenant with us as well. Now we know that it's the same covenant because God's love and care and concern for us is, is for always. And that's an essential part of the covenant. But there are different ways that we look at that covenant, different focus points that we take when we think about that covenant that God has with us. So first we saw the covenant of promise. And we looked at that through the story of Noah and his family and the ark and coming to rest after the flood. And we hear the promise, the covenant of promise, the promise you will not be destroyed. And after that, we heard the story of Abraham and Sarah, or as they were first known, Abram and Sari. And we learned of God's covenant of trust. There will be a future. Even if it seems like it would be unlikely and even impossible, trust, trust that there will be a future. And that is what Abram and Sari, Abraham and Sarah heard. Next, we heard that God's covenant is a covenant of love. From Moses, in the wilderness with the, the, the wandering slaves, no longer slaves of Egypt, but wandering in the wilderness, liberated liberated from slavery, God provided for them a code, a way to live together, commandments, how to live together, so that they would keep the community in order, avoid conflict in difficult and trying times. It's a covenant of love. Well, today we're learning about and we're thinking about how God's commandment is also a com uh, God's covenant is also a covenant of healing. And isn't that timely for us to remember? Healing is about being made whole. Healing is about coming away from fear. Healing is about mending brokenness that we experience. And yes, healing is also about sickness. So this is now a year that we have been in pandemic, walking through this time of pandemic. It's a year that we have been thinking about sickness. And we've been thinking about keeping safe. We've been learning how sickness in the form of an aerosol transmitted virus spreads from one person to another, to another, to a whole population. And we've been working out ways to avoid causing the spread of that virus. And we've been watching out for one another by watching how we can control that spread, especially if we don't know that we have been infected. 
And in this time, we've also been discovering just how unequal we are in our society and in our world when it comes to being, being able to stay safe and to stay healthy. We've been thinking all the time about healing. It's just the thing to remember that God makes a covenant of healing with us. Well, in the older story that we have today, from the book of Numbers, it is partly about healing. And not so much healing from disease, but healing from the afflictions of the mind and of the heart. And yes, of course, there were those snakes that were part of that story, and snake bites are very serious. But I think, I think the message that emerges in this reading, in this story, from their wilderness wanderings, isn't so much about, isn't so much about snake bites. I think this story really is more about trust and faith. The raising up of that bronze snake on a pole, on a stick, was to say to the people, look up. Look up, for God is with you. Maybe, maybe watch out for snakes. Watch out where you're going. But look up. God is with you. And that's healing of discontent and the, fear and, the, and the anxiousness that you've been feeling. See, they actually thought when they were wandering in the, de in the desert that they should go back to slavery in Egypt. And that's what we need to pay attention to in this story. The wilderness was difficult. It was a difficult place for them. And they seemed to forget that God was with them all the way along. When it didn't seem like there was anything to eat, there was manna on the ground. And when that even didn't seem to be enough for them, there were quails that came and flew in and they could catch them and have those as food. And stamp on a rock and suddenly there was an artesian well of fresh water to drink. God was with them in the wilderness. But you see, they had to work at it as well. They had to work at the freedom that they had taken. God was with them. And they had to work at it. All of that, all of that was about the healing of their anxious hearts. It was healing of their discontent minds. God's covenant of healing tells them, tells us to look up and see what God is doing. Look up and see what God is doing. In the later stories that we have, in the New Testament, the reading that we have from the Gospel of John, it may for many of you be a fairly familiar reading, one that you've heard before. Maybe you've heard it many times. And I have to say that that's a reading that I've struggled with from time to time. But my struggle isn't so much about the reading itself. My struggle with this reading is how it sometimes is used by other people of faith. Sometimes this reading is treated almost like a weapon against people who might be questioning or wondering or just feeling uncertain about faith. And who hasn't been through that part, that kind of experience in their faith? A weapon that says, if you believe the right things, 
then God loves you. And if you don't believe the right things, then you're not loved. How much more is that a weapon? Now, I know that there's more to this reading than that. I know that there are more than that one way of looking at this reading. But some of those old experiences, those hearing this reading used in that way, well, sometimes that just sticks with you and you have trouble getting past it. But I was in a discussion about it at one point. And others who were in this discussion were saying just how comforting they found this reading to be. They felt loved because of this reading. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. So maybe it doesn't have to be a weapon. Maybe I don't have to hear this reading used as a weapon. Maybe it can instead be part of God's covenant of love. I think that's what it's supposed to be. That's what it's best used as. And I also remember coming to know more about beliefs. Beliefs. They're not about thinking the right things. Beliefs are where my heart sits. It's about what I love and all that I, all that I put my heart to. Do I love Jesus? Do I look up to Jesus? Do I put my heart in Jesus' heart and look to his love? Do I look to his mercy and his unconditional acceptance? Do I look to Jesus as the one who could love and keep on loving and even go as far as love could possibly go, even if that means to death itself? In this season, this Lenten season, we know that's where it's going. Knowing love that strong, that true, that's healing. Because it holds together the broken parts of my life. It holds them together. It holds the fear and the uncertainties. It holds the cynical and the untrusting parts of me. And does not let go. That love, that love makes me, and ho rather holds me, until I can hear again the covenant of promise that you will not be destroyed. Till I can hear again the covenant of trust that you will have a future. The covenant of love. God is always with you and the covenant of healing that God holds me together, holds us together, holds all the world in a healing embrace. God so loved the world. Blessings to you in this Lenten season. Amen. Love divine, all loves excelling. An old hymn, classic hymn to sing. Sit on.
for your continuing support of the ministry of Trinity United Church and of the United Church of Canada through your, through your gifts to this congregation and to the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church. Your gifts of money make a big difference. Loving and generous God, you have blessed us in so many ways and now we return a portion to you of your gifts. Use them for the work of your church, multiply them and share them with those most in need. By your grace, make our lives a testament to your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we are separated one from another we cannot meet together at this time and yet we trust and we believe and we put our hope and our faith together that god is with us and that god hears our prayers so let our hearts be joined in prayer loving god we thank you for the journey of our lives with its ups and downs, its questions and challenges, and with its moments of joy. We thank you for the beauty around us. We can think of our own river valley and of the parkland in which we're found, the bright sunshine, fresh snow when it falls, and the changing seasons as we're experiencing. We thank you for all that reminds us of life and of, lo of life made new. And in the quiet of this place, at this time, we offer our own joys and celebrations. And even as we th say thank you, we realize that there is also brokenness in us and in our world. We realize that we've not always lived up to the love to which you have called us. 
sometimes by actions or by inactions, sometimes by just going along with things. In these ways, we have broken faith with each other and with you. So we offer our brokenness, O oh God, loving God. No, not, not only asking that we would be forgiven, but that by your love, we would be made whole, living in new ways and living out Christ's love. So receive the prayers of our hearts, knowing that we are forgiven, knowing that we are loved, we turn to the world to love it into wholeness. We pray for people living in wilderness times in their lives, people facing hardship, poverty, trouble, people tempted to turn away from what is right and just. We pray for the world, all creatures, all places, facing destruction. We pray for all those who are listed in our prayer list, published each week. And we pray for others we know whose need may be known only to you. We pray for healing and for wholeness. Help us to be part of the solutions so that our prayers may turn from words alone into actions. Bless our journey, we pray. And we close with the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and forever amen an anthem of being an affirming congregation as we are draw the circle wide draw it wider still
Thank you again for joining us in this online presence of Trinity United Church in Edmonton. Receive these words of sending and of blessing to take you into the coming week. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look on you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. Peace be with you.